Welcome back to the Ultimate Squad Builder and the last two weeks I kind of did ones where I have to choose players out of a couple of options really. This week it's a little bit different, of course the title gives it away. This is the all undrafted team, so a team made up exclusively of course out of players that went undrafted. So we start as always with the quarterbacks and this is a guy I think often kind of gets forgotten that he was undrafted. Tony Romo who was undrafted in 2003 joined the Dallas Cowboys and has been with them ever since and has gone to four Pro Bowls since then and one time second team All Pro. The OG undrafted running back Arian Foster now of course he missed the entire season last year, came into the league in 2009, spent most of his career except for this year with the Houston Texans and in that time went to four Pro Bowls, who was two times All Pro, two time NFL rushing touchdown leader, and the NFL rushing yards leader as well in 2010. CJ Anderson is now spreading the good word of undrafted running backs. Last year, 720 yards, five touchdowns, not bad going, a Super Bowl 50 champion, made the Pro Bowl in 2014. At fullback, we were completely spoilt for choice. John Kuhn, the highest rated out of all of those guys, a two time Super Bowl champion, came into the league in 2005. Two seasons with the Steelers, a bunch more seasons with the Packers and he's now with the Saints, two-time All-Pro, four-time Pro Bowler. Then we have Marcel Reese who came up last week, originally joined the Miami Dolphins in 2008 but was only part of their off-season team, joined the Oakland Raiders that year, has gone to four Pro Bowls since then and has been named All-Pro in 2013. And then finally Mike Tolbert, undrafted in 2008, joined the San Diego Chargers, was with them till he joined the Panthers in 2012 and since joining the Panthers has been named all pro twice and went to the Pro Bowl twice. And then I just snuck in LeGarrett Blunt here at running back as well, because why not? He was undrafted too. Now for the wide receivers, and again, we weren't necessarily spoiled for choice, but there are plenty of good number one options, and then a lot of players as you get deeper. Doug Baldwin, undrafted in 2011, joined the Seattle Seahawks immediately that season, led the team in receiving, NFL receiving touchdowns co-leader last year, a Super Bowl champion, 1,000 yards and 14 touchdowns last year. At the wide receiver, a number two spot right where he belongs Alan Hearns undrafted in 2014 of course joined the Jacksonville Jaguars last year despite being the number two guy 1,000 yards 10 touchdowns and then I've saved this guy for the slot Victor Cruz making a solid effort at a comeback this year undrafted in 2010 was named all pro in 2011 pro bowl in 2012 a super bowl champion and is one of 13 players to have a 99 yard touchdown reception and now for the tight end and people were surprised I didn't mention this player last week when we were looking at the best players over 30 and that's because I knew he was coming up this week Antonio Gates the tight end, undrafted in 2003, he spent his entire career with the San Diego Chargers, eight Pro Bowls, three times first team All-Pro, two times second team All-Pro, the NFL 2000's All-Decade Team, 10,000 receiving yards club, the San Diego Chargers, all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards and receiving touchdowns, and most touchdowns between a quarterback and tight end in NFL history, which he obviously shares with Philip Rivers. This guy redefined the tight end position, and he was undrafted a basketball player out of Kent State and what a signing this guy turned out to be. At left tackle we have Jason Peters, undrafted in 2004, spent five seasons with the Buffalo Bills, then went over to the Philadelphia Eagles, an eight-time Pro Bowler, six-time All-Pro, and on top of that he has two receiving touchdowns. At left guard we have Ramon Foster, undrafted in 2009, signed by the Steelers. Now he doesn't have any awards, no Pro Bowls or anything, but I think it's statement enough that he's been starting for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the last six years. Now at center, Sendline was the only guy that I could find that was actually a center on this game. Undrafted in 2007, was with the Arizona Cardinals from 2007 to 2015, is no longer with them. Undrafted out of college, but started eight seasons for the Arizona Cardinals. Went to the Super Bowl with them. It's not bad going for him, but right now is a free agent. At right guard, we have Alex Boone, undrafted in 2009. Spent the majority of his career so far with the 49ers, all but this year with the Minnesota Vikings. And again, he doesn't have any awards to speak of, but he was named Pro Football Focus All-Pro in 2012. And then at right tackle, we've moved over a left tackle, Donald Penn. 
Undrafted in 2006, went to the Minnesota Vikings, but that same season went to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, where he was until 2013, has now been with the Oakland Raiders, where he's been a very dependable part of the offensive line for them, was the same with the Buccaneers, only went to the Pro Bowl once in 2010, but considering he was just re-signed to a two-year $14 million contract, he's probably doing all right. The offensive line, really not a place where you find a lot of undrafted talent, apparently, not as much as you see with the receivers. So we move on to the defense and we always start with the defensive line. At left end, Michael Bennett, undrafted in 2009, went to the Seattle Seahawks. They shipped him off to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers where he really played quite well, went back to the Seattle Seahawks and has been part of that extremely good Seattle defense that has led the league in least points allowed for the last four years. Only went to the Pro Bowl once in 2015, obviously a Super Bowl champion, 43 and a half career sacks, 8 forced fumbles, not bad going for a guy that was originally waived by the team that signed him. At right end, slightly out of position, Cameron Wake, who was undrafted in 2005, he joined the New York Giants in April, but was released that same year in June of 2005. Then he joined the BC Lions in Canada in 2007. And then after playing for them for two seasons, joined the Miami Dolphins, where he's now been a four-time Pro Bowler, three-time All-Pro, 71 career sacks, 261 tackles, 17 forced fumbles. It's guys like Cameron Wake that really make you question how they go undrafted and not only go undrafted, but have to fight their way into the league through Canada. Defensive tackle, not quite a glamorous position as maybe the defensive ends. No great players there. Tony McDaniel, undrafted in 2006, has played with the Jaguars, the Dolphins, the Seattle Seahawks, where he did win a Super Bowl, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for a year, and he's now back with the Seattle Seahawks. 237 career tackles and 11 and a half sacks. Tony McDaniel actually started all but one game for the 2013 Seattle Seahawks, who obviously went on to win the Super Bowl, so that isn't bad going. We've got two defensive linemen from the Seahawks Super Bowl team here in the all undrafted team. And then our second defensive tackle, Kyle Love, undrafted in 2010, signed with the New England Patriots, went to a Super Bowl with the New England Patriots, was then released by the New England Patriots after getting diagnosed with diabetes, then bounced around the league, was with the Jacksonville Jaguars for an off season, then went to the Chiefs, then went back to the Jaguars in that same season, then was with the Chiefs in the preseason again, is now with the Carolina Carolina Panthers since 2014. He's got 89 career tackles and nine and a half career sacks. At left outside linebacker Vontaze Perfect, undrafted in 2012, signed by the Bengals, of course, the only team he's been with. Pro Bowl in 2013, second team All Pro in 2013, and he's now played in enough games to make up three entire seasons despite being in the league for five, obviously only four games this season anyway. But in those 48 games, he's recorded 404 tackles, five sacks, three interceptions and two forced fumbles. Not bad going whatsoever. Inside linebacker Wesley Woodyard, who was undrafted in 2008, played with the Denver Broncos until joining the Tennessee Titans a few seasons ago. No awards to speak of, but he does have seven interceptions and seven forced fumbles, which isn't that bad. Joining him at inside linebacker and a little bit of a step down, Aaron Henderson, who joined the Minnesota Vikings after being undrafted in 2008, saw his playing time go up after three seasons of being nothing more than a backup, and since joining the Jets two years ago, has returned to being not much more than a backup. At right outside linebacker, James Harrison, the man that has no age. And to think of all the honors and awards he has, he had quite the journey to the NFL. Undrafted, of course, in 2002. Joined the Pittsburgh Steelers. Next season, joins the Baltimore Ravens. That doesn't work out so well, so he goes over to NFL Europe, plays for the Rhine Fire in Dusseldorf, Germany for one season comes back to join the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2004. During that period with the team, goes to five Pro Bowls, wins two Super Bowls, is named All-Pro four times, Defensive Player of the Year in 2008, got himself the longest interception in Super Bowl history at 100 yards, which also was the longest defensive play of any type in Super Bowl history. This is a man that teams didn't want until 2004 then went on to play with the Cincinnati Bengals for a year, now back with the Steelers, 741 career tackles, 76 and a half sacks, 32 forced fumbles, 8 interceptions, and let's just talk about before we move on that 2008 season, 
101 tackles, 16 sacks, one safety, one interception, seven forced fumbles. That's just ridiculous. At the corner, one slot, a guy who's been doing all right for himself as well. Chris Harris, undrafted in 2011, signed by the Denver Broncos. Super Bowl champion, of course, last year. Two-time Pro Bowler, two-time All-Pro. And of course, until he was beaten by Antonio Brown, Chris Harris went 36 games without allowing a touchdown. From one undrafted Super Bowl winning cornerback to another, Malcolm Butler, undrafted out of West Alabama in 2014, of course, joined the New England Patriots, went to the Pro Bowl last year, before that won the Super Bowl, I don't even need to mention the interception. One of the rare occasions where one of the fringe players makes a spectacular play in the Super Bowl and backs it up with a Pro Bowl season the next year. And the Super Bowl winning cornerbacks are coming thick and fast now. Sam Shields of the Green Bay Packers, undrafted in 2010, has only ever played with the Green Bay Packers, a Super Bowl champion with them, also went to the Pro Bowl in 2014, has 18 career interceptions, 245 tackles which is a whole lot and heck we're on a roll why not add another Super Bowl winning cornerback Brandon Brown are currently not with a team undrafted in 2005 played for the Denver Broncos for two seasons then went off to Canada like so many do was then signed by the Seattle Seahawks went to a Pro Bowl after his first season with them then won a Super Bowl with them the next year went to the New England Patriots won a Super Bowl with them then went to the New Orleans Saints won a oh no he didn't win a Super Bowl with them but still, he did pretty well back-to-back -back Super Bowls with two different teams. At free safety, Tashawn Gibson joined the Browns in 2012, went to the Pro Bowl in 2014, turned that into a pretty nice contract with the Jacksonville Jaguars as a free agent this past offseason. And strong safety, Mike Adams, who we already had last week, we'll just quickly go over him. San Francisco 49ers signed him in 2004, then he went to the Browns, then he went to the Broncos, then he went to the Colts, and since then has gone to the Pro Bowl both of the years he's been with the Colts. And then we have the actual selection for this week, Barry Church, undrafted in 2010, signed by the Dallas Cowboys. Since becoming the starter for the Dallas Cowboys, Barry Church in three and a bit seasons has got 378 tackles and four interceptions as well as four forced fumbles. Then onto the special teams, Adam Vinatieri, one of the greatest kickers in NFL history, undrafted in 1996, actually first joined the Amsterdam Admirals before joining the New England Patriots in the same year, and since then has been a four-time Super Bowl champion, a three-time Pro Bowl selection, a three three-time first team All-Pro selection, has a career percentage of 84.3% and has made the NFL 2000s All-Decade team. Punter gives you plenty of options as plenty of these guys go undrafted but I've gone with Marquette King. Undrafted in 2012, of course signed by the Raiders, has only played with the Raiders. 12,734 punt yards and an average of 46.1. And a longest punt that he got this season, and maybe before, I'm not entirely sure, of 70 yards, which is really quite cool. A kick and punt returner, I've gone for Danny Amendola. Not necessarily known as an elite player in that regard, but this was the best way to fit him. He did, after all, win a Super Bowl, caught a touchdown in a Super Bowl, caught a touchdown thrown by Julian Edelman that helped put his team in that Super Bowl. So I figure he deserves to be here as an undrafted free agent as well and I couldn't think of anybody else to put here, so that's why he's here. Head coach, I've gone Bruce Arians, really because I couldn't think of a coaching alternative for being undrafted, so I figure a guy that only got his first head coaching gig in the NFL at 61 years old is about as close to undrafted as you can get. And it's at this point that I thought about Jason Garrett, who was undrafted in 1989 out of Princeton as a quarterback, and probably would have been a better choice. I wait for the day that I search for a long snapper and he actually turns up. Our long snapper for the all undrafted team and of course this pretty much was a choice of all but I think two of the long snappers or maybe three of them pretty much everybody's undrafted I've gone for John Kondo undrafted in 2005 signed by the Dallas Cowboys went to the New England Patriots for an offseason then joined the Oakland Raiders in 2006 where he's been since then a two-time pro bowler and he snaps the ball well and right before I finish, actually an amendment to the team here. I've actually put in Evan Smith at center. I had him originally written down as a guard, so he slipped by me. Obviously a better option than Senline. Undrafted in 2009, still playing now with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and was a Super Bowl champion during his time with the Green Bay Packers. But that does it now for this team. Defense, I am very impressed with. When you look across the bottom here, just incredible players. 
no end of good cornerbacks. The defensive end's very good. The linebacker is pretty impressive as well, although obviously Harrison, uh, well, he doesn't have an age, so he's not older, but you know, he's been in the league for a long time. Now looking at the stats, an overall of 81 for this team, 81 rated offense, 82 rated defense, and the thing will cost you 947,000 coins on PlayStation 4, but only 862,000 on Xbox One, and I assume that's because probably one of these counts then just wasn't in the database. <laughs> Quick, now's your chance to never buy this t-shirt because it's not on sale. Buy the I may have been undrafted, but at least the Browns didn't pick me t-shirt, which says, hey, nobody wanted me, but at least I didn't go to the team that is a graveyard for early round draft picks. 